I just concluded my 30-day trial of Unraid, and we're going to walk through both the pros and the cons of my experiment and some details about how it worked for my particular use case. But let me just start with the bottom line up front so you can hear it and decide if you want to hear me babble any longer. And that is, after 30 days, I did not buy it, but I would recommend buying it. In certain cases, it is definitely worth considering. I didn't buy it because I wanted to go on and try something else, not because I didn't think it was worth the money or a good product. So with that out of the way, now you can decide if you want to hear more than that. But let me jump in. So just as a reminder, you know, my use case for Unraid is I have an old gaming PC, which I think I said it before, it's like an i9 9900KS, 32 gigs of RAM. And basically I picked Unraid because I was interested in trying its mixed drive support. And so I have a bunch of old hard drives and SSDs around. I think I had like six or seven. And if you watch my other video on a do-it-yourself drive enclosure, I was really hoping to build a larger enclosure and leverage Unraid to just do this big mix pool. Now, that was a total failure, and you can go watch that video to learn more. However, I did have a machine with a bunch of mixed old uh, drives, everything from like a 10 gigabyte, I think I probably had three six terabytes and a couple three terabytes, a random four terabyte SSD and a couple like 500 gig SSDs. And I'm like, I'm going to throw it all in Unraid and see what happens. Now let's start with the pros or the good stuff and what went well. Starting with the setup, uh, really straightforward. Now, when you dig into Unraid, you'll find that it is unique in that the OS runs off a USB and your software license is driven by the USB key. And that is a little weird. The plus side to that is once you burn the USB, it's actually really easy. The setup only took, I think it was like a few minutes. Then I booted into the web interface and I got to give it credit for being basically a hands-off setup. The USB key situation is a little weird. On the plus side, I don't need to use, uh, give up any other drive for the installation media. Whereas, you know, when I just set up TrueNAS recently, I basically had to give up an entire drive for the TrueNAS installation. And now I have a VDEV which doesn't have redundancy because I didn't plan for it, but that, that's neither here nor there. So the USB drive kind of takes that off the table and puts all of your storage drives you know, into your hands and makes them available to use. The downside is it's weird having your key, your license key tied to USB. And it also made it very difficult to virtualize this setup. I think I could, but I was like, I don't feel like it. Um, so I'll just build the machine myself. I would have liked to virtualize Unraid to try it out, but that was not an option. But overall, setup was uh, easy and straightforward. The next, I would say, good thing about it is, and you'll laugh if you uh, watch my last video on Unraid, is I'll say the interface is nice. And that word is chosen carefully. I think the interface looks good. It looks better than uh, other tools. I actually think it looks better than TrueNAS, in my opinion. Things like the dashboard have a lot of information at your fingertips, allow you to quickly see how your server is running and zoom into areas that you need to dive into. Now, I will say I found it super confusing, but I will hold off on my thinking there until we get to the, the other part of this uh, video. Next up, and probably the, the best killer feature of Unraid is supporting mixed drive sizes. I, I mean, that's, that's I think why many people are drawn to it. And it really is a great selling point. You can just throw a pile of mixed size drives at Unraid and you get a ton of storage and you get it with redundancy. And the way it does that is it sets aside the largest drive as a parity drive. And you can have two parity drives and then the rest of the drives become a pool. You know, in my configuration, I had the 10 gig, 10 terabyte. I'm sorry if I said gig before. I had the 10 terabyte drive as the parity drive and everything else uh, functioned as a pool. And it was great. Like you just get this pool of storage and it's super easy. Next up, uh, sharing was super easy to set up. I must be really bad at it, but whenever I set up shares in particular, like SMB shares, I always spend like way too much time getting their credentials right and everything else. The good thing is Unraid makes that super easy by not using any. Um, so maybe not awesome from a security standpoint. I said that before. For a home lab situation where I just want to get something working, access my files over the network, and have a, a bit bucket to throw stuff in, I really did appreciate the simplicity. I had to do nothing. I just set up a share. I exported it. 
and then I could see it everywhere else. And I was able to go from there. Now, of course, then I could layer in all the credential stuff I wanted, but I appreciated the flexibility. And NFS shares were, I would say, almost as easy to set up. Figuring out the NF NFS path took a little more work, which is a minor gripe. But again, NFS uh, pretty much worked out of the box. The last stuff is, for me, uh, the VM uh, setup was, was really easy. And again, I'm not using this as some big VM host. I ran just a couple and I, I ran like a media server on it where I, ran, I was running Plex and then had Plex mount uh, the shares on kind of the Unraid server. It worked beautifully. Very easy to set up. Did find the menus confusing as I have commented on before, but once it was up and running, it seemed very fast actually compared to some other solutions I've used. And the VNC uh, access was we worked really well and it worked consistently, which is one of my frustration points with TrueNAS at the moment. So again, for running a couple simple VMs, you know, good environment. There's probably so much more to say, but you can you can see where I, I'm not going to be a power user of this. I just want to throw a few drives at it, run a th few VMs. I'm pretty straightforward. I There is a whole community section of apps and extensions that you can add to Unraid. I played with it a little bit, but I'm not going to go in the depth here because I, that's not a high value to me. So if you know if that is something that you value in your NAS solution, it looks like Unraid has a pretty good uh, set of uh, apps, they call them. So that is worth checking out to see if it has additional functionality that would be helpful, helpful for you. I also did not play with the container capability. So you can run uh, containers natively in this. I tend to prefer VMs for my work. So there you go. Let's turn over to the areas I didn't like so much. And some of these are going to be just the flip side of what I said before, but I think they're worth calling out. And the first is the USB setup was simple, but I it did find it frustrating that I could not run this in a virtualized environment. I would have loved to try it without wiping a machine. So that is what it is. And I think some people will love or hate the USB situation. That one will be debated to death. Okay, next ones. And these are a little more significant. I found no good way to back up the contents of my Unraid server, like an offsite backup. And there was no good way to back up my virtual machines. So I was storing my virtual machines on an SSD back pool with no redundancy, just because I didn't have the SSDs to, to kind of get redundancy into that setup. I had one four terabyte. So for speed, I put the VM drives on there. And I was like, I'm not really worried about it because my VMs are stateless. I don't mind if they get nuked, but I would like to have a quick backup somewhere. And for both cases of VM drive backup and overall array backup, there's no integrated solution. I did find some solutions in the app store, but I didn't go far down that path because my view is like, if you take storage seriously, like the backup needs to be built in. And of course there's the interface. I went on at length about this and other reviewers have talked about it as well. It, it's pretty, but it can be really confusing. Like confusing, I said in the first video, I found it confusing to the point where I almost just walked away and threw my hands up. I couldn't figure out how to do the simplest things. I still found it confusing after a month. I thought maybe I would figure it out, but as I tried different use cases or hit different things I needed to do, I always hit some interface problem that drove me insane. And some of them, like it's not just frustrating, I found some of the interface uh, defects downright dangerous. And I'll give you an example. When I wanted to remove a disk from the array, you would think you just go to the array menu and you just click remove or take the array offline and click remove. Nope, that is not how you do things at all. There is a whole separate interface uh, under the settings menu. It, it might be under tools. I'll probably get the visualization right here where you create a new array configuration. You basically preserve the drive list and basically it's it looks like you could lose all of your data when you go through this menu system. It's not clear what it's gonna do at all. It just looks like you're wiping your array and starting over. And I sat there trying to figure out what it would do. There's no good documentation, no nothing. And finally just had to go for it and realize that if this doesn't work the way I want, I'm gonna spend a couple days copying terabytes of data over just to remove a drive from an array. It, in the end, I didn't lose any data. It worked just fine. But you think about like if you're a storage server, the, the process of adding and removing drives should be absolutely brain dead and simple such that anyone could do it and understand what's gonna happen and have confidence that they're not going to lose data or that if they are gonna lose data, it's very clear why. That was not the case in this interface at all. Very frustrating. I hit cases like this more than once. So next on the frustrations list, or I'll say the areas to improve. 
cash pools are very weird. Uh, I was excited to be able to kind of put my SSDs in front of a bunch of old uh, drives and get some good performance. And first, they're confusing to set up because they're not well integrated at all. Basically, the way it works is you, you set up a pool and you can just call it a cache pool, like caching isn't natively built in to Unraid. What there is, is there's a background process called a mover. And what you say is basically it is gonna move data from one set of storage to another. If you have a cache, an SSD cache pool in front of your hard drive based array, all of your writes will go to the cache pool, which is great. And then this mover process, which runs on a periodic basis, will copy that data back to the main array for storage. So it's kind of a weird cache in that, sure, it'll help speed up your writes because all of your writes are gonna go to faster storage. It will help read performance in the case that the data is there. Like if you did a read after write, you would get increased performance. It does not work where read misses are pulled up from the slow storage to the faster storage. So it's not like a real tiered storage system. It's just, it's just weird. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. It works, I, I guess, but it wasn't the type of caching I was looking for. And you can compare that to like say uh, TrueNAS's caching system, which has very integrated solutions for both fast read and write caching through like logs and caching VDEVs, which you can dive more into. I was hoping for a setup more like that. Didn't work that way. Cache pools are odd. They're confusing to set up and they don't work the way I expected. Now, did that matter for me? No, not at all. I was really just playing around. And to be honest, like I said, I'm running a media server with like one client. So any read write performance to even an older SATA drive doesn't matter to me. In your use case, it may be different. You may want to think about this if you're expecting some robust SSD based cache solution that hits all the use cases, you're not going to find it here. Okay, and the last one I'm going to bring up that I noticed the most was because of the way the mixed drive array work, you are going to be IO limited to like basically one drive because the data is not striped across the drive. So the way it works is it fills them up and then moves on to the next drive. I think there is a way to kind of change that filling strategy, but you're not going to have one file striped across all the drives like you would in like a RAID configuration. So what I found was as I dumped all my media onto it, you know, all the photos, videos, movies, etc. You just fill up drive one, they move on to drive two, etc. Again, for my low IO use case of Media Center, this was not a problem either in the read or the write case. When I started to pull data off of it, basically your read speed is limited by the speed of one drive. So I'm pulling all this data off of it and it's only going as fast as one old SATA drive can go. And I had, I happened to have a 10 gig network card on it. It wasn't saturating it at all. I, I would have been fine with a one gig card because these drives are so slow. And of course, remember because the caching doesn't work, like there isn't some smart read miss caching solution, which is going to bring data forward onto an SSD. I was getting nothing there. So you will hit limitations on your drive IO just because of the way data is laid out on these drives may not be a, a consideration for you, but I, I noticed it. That is, you know, my kind of view on Unraid. Again, that was kind of a random collection of things I hit in using it for a month. And I just want to go back to the top. It is absolutely worth a try because your situation, your hardware, your use case may be different and it's worth giving it a 30 day shot. And then I think as a product, it's in this very interesting niche. So here, if you look at kind of the pricing of this, you can see your starter is 49 bucks a license. You have six storage devices. That's probably good for most people. And you get some, I don't know if you get oh, OS updates for a year. And then as you kind of go up in price, you basically get more storage devices and uh, OS updates for longer, which is fine. So worst case, you're going to spend 250 bucks. So this really comes down to how long do you want OS updates for? And how many storage devices do you have? With the size of drives today, I don't know how many people really have more than six, unless you're someone like me that's like collected them for a decade. And it's probably not even worth it for me to run them because of the power consumption. But that's a whole other thing. It is worth trying. I'm just speculating here, but I, I feel like Unraid is in an interesting market position because here they are charging, you know, 50 bucks up to 250 bucks. You think, is it worth, you know, that much money for the product they're building? 
And if you, I think, yes, I mean, it's a very good, capable product. Sure. It has its, its quirks, but it's solid and it works and it offers a whole bunch of great functionality. It's worth some money. I think these are reasonable prices. The problem is I think I suspect they're competing in a market offerings like TrueNAS, where, where the community edition is free and they're making all their money selling hardware and enterprise support so they can afford to give TrueNAS away. So there's probably something I don't know about the Unraid business, but I think it puts it in a difficult position when you can get you know a lot of the functionality for zero cost. I'll leave it there with one more thought, which is I think the killer feature really is the mixed drive size. And I can't, I haven't been able to find that anywhere else in a way I liked it. I think I tried making like a, a LVM group in Linux with mixed drive sizes that functioned very similarly. That that was pretty awful for a whole, whole other set of reasons. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Unraid. And if you have tried it out, I'd love to hear uh, your thoughts below and we'll see you next time.